Chapter 7 of Alice in Wonderland is called A Mad Tea Party. In front of the Hatter's house, a long tea table is set under a tree. The March Hare, the Hatter, and a sleepy Dormouse are sitting at one end. They shout, no room, but Alice indignantly <clears throat> sits down, and they have a truly absurd conversation about meaning and time. The Dormouse tells Alice a story and then falls asleep at the table. Alice is so disgusted by the rudeness of the three that she leaves. Alice re-enters the long hall, takes the golden key, and walks into the garden she's been waiting to visit for so long. In Victorian times, many books about etiquette were published. Up until the 18th century, land ownership was the main way to amass wealth in Britain. The growth of manufacturing during the Industrial Revolution brought with it new ways to become rich. As a result, the middle classes burgeoned in the 19th century. Perceiving themselves as upwardly mobile, the newly wealthy sought to emulate the traditional upper classes by voraciously consuming manuals of good manners. Ten years before Alice in Wonderland was published, Lewis Carroll wrote a parody of etiquette rules about eating. His depiction of the hatter and animals at tea returns to this topic. These characters break pretty much every rule of etiquette. The March Hare offers Alice wine, even though he has no wine to offer. The Dormouse falls asleep at the table. And the Hatter and March Hare repeatedly interrupt Alice and insult her. Alice tries fruitlessly to remind them the rules of etiquette. Up to this point, Alice has tried to understand the odd speech and behavior of the characters she's met in Wonderland. In this chapter, she starts getting impatient, and she doesn't react with meekness to the cruelties heaped upon her. Alice is too spunky for that. Wordplay is coupled with the dream motif in this chapter, which has a basis in real life facts and expressions. For example, hat makers once used mercury to make felt hats. Mercury is a serious neurotoxin that can cause shaking hands, personality changes, and memory loss. Mad as a hatter was a common British expression, as was mad as a March hare. Male hares were believed to become aggressive and excitable in March, the beginning of breeding season. Dormice, which are endangered today, were common in Carol's day. These hamster-like animals were strictly nocturnal and therefore drowsy during the day. The actions of all the animals at the tea party reflect these associations. <laughs>